What's up, VR kids? Have you ever heard the phrase, prayer is powerful? Many people who love God believe that prayer is a very powerful thing. And we can read in the Bible where James, the brother of Jesus, wrote some incredible things about prayer. Take this verse, for example. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. James 5, 16. There is power in the prayers of those who have made Jesus the leader of their lives. And it's effective, which means it works. That's great. Uh, wait, hold on. What's this? My phone is buzzing. Hello? Hmm. Mm-hmm. You are so right. Yep, sure will. Okay, all right, bye. <laughs> well, what I've learned from that totally fake phone call is that I have not even explained what prayer is yet. <laughs> Silly me. Prayer is communication with God. Kind of like how talking on the phone with someone is one way we can communicate with others. Prayer is talking to God and listening for God to speak to us. And good news, we can actually learn a lot about prayer from Jesus and the Bible. Take a look. Sometimes Jesus would pray with others, like when he asked Peter, James, and John to come with him to a mountain to pray. Other times, Jesus would leave his disciples and pray by himself so he would have time alone with his Father. When Jesus prayed, he prayed for all sorts of things. He prayed for his disciples, for those in need of healing, and for little children. Jesus even prayed for us and asked his Father to watch over us. That's right, Jesus prayed for you and for me. Through Jesus' prayers, we can learn how to pray too. Jesus used the Lord's Prayer to teach his disciples to pray. It wasn't long and fancy. He showed them that they could pray in a simple way about many different things. Our prayers can be the same way. Jesus also taught us that we should pray without giving up. God is always listening to what we say. The way he answers our prayers might be different from what we expect, but we can always trust his plan for us. So the next time you're happy or sad, or worried or angry, or just need help, talk to God about it. He listened to his son's prayers, and he'll listen to yours too. So prayer is powerful, and prayer is important. Throughout this series, we are going to take a look at several powerful prayer moments to see what God wants to teach us about prayer. Today, we begin with a woman named Hannah. The Bible tells us that Hannah didn't have any children because the Lord hadn't given her any. And another woman who did have children would mock Hannah and make fun of her every year when they would go to the tabernacle to worship God and offer sacrifices. This made Hannah really sad and she wouldn't even eat. One time when Hannah was at the tabernacle, she prayed to God and made this promise. O oh Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. Now, Eli, a priest, watched Hannah as she prayed, but he was confused because he saw her lips moving but heard no sounds. So he thought Hannah was drunk. But Hannah explained that she hadn't been drinking alcohol. She was just really discouraged and poured her heart out to God. In that case, Eli said, Go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. Eli blessed Hannah with his words, and it encouraged her. Not long after that, guess what? Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, which means asked of God because she had asked for a child for so long and God had answered her prayer with a yes. And when Samuel was old enough, Hannah kept her promise to God by taking Samuel to the tabernacle to grow and learn and serve the Lord. That true story is incredible. Hannah wanted to have a child so badly, but for reasons only God knows, she had not been able to have children yet. 
Then, after a long time of praying for a baby, God allowed her to become pregnant and give birth to Samuel. But then she gave him back to God to live and work, serving God with Eli, just as she had promised. So then she was back to being childless again, right? <laughs> actually, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, we're told that God actually blessed Hannah with five more children. Talk about an answer to prayer. In the story today, Hannah prayed because she was sad but she prayed when she was happy too. In fact, in 1 Samuel 2, we can read Hannah's prayer of praise that she said to God after dropping Samuel off at the tabernacle. So yes, we can pray when we're sad, but we should also pray when we're happy or frustrated or ashamed or excited or, or anytime. So after all this talk about prayer, what do you think the main point is we want to remember. It's short and sweet. Pray. That's it. Let's say that bottom line together. Pray. There is a lot we can learn about prayer, but the most important thing is for each of us to just do it. Pray. Spend time every day talking with God. Tell Him whatever is on your mind. Praise Him. Thank Him. Tell Him you're sorry for disobeying Him ask for forgiveness. And of course, you can ask God for anything. That doesn't mean you will get everything you ask for. And if his answer is yes, it may not be immediately when we ask for it. Sometimes we will have to wait, but that's okay because God's timing is best. Because God knows what's best for us, he may answer some prayers with a no. We might not like that answer, but we can learn to trust that His plan is the best plan. But no matter what, don't forget to pray. Pray every day. Pray for one another. Pray trusting in God's plan. Pray about anything and everything. Pray, pray, pray. Remember, prayer is simply talking to God and also listening to what He may be trying to say to you. So help me say that super easy bottom line again. Pray. See you later.